Greetings, Pantheon fans. Well, 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 we, the update is finally here. I have had people inside the Pantheon community who responded to my last video telling me, keep an eye on this, keep an eye on this. And then a few days ago, a few people commented, this guy called it. And I was like, hmm, really? Did I? Okay, well, what's going on? Oh boy, did I call it. So, to recap my last video, in the last video, which I'll link below, I went through the history of Pantheon's 10-year-long development and just tried to provide as much factual information as I could about it. And then at the end of the video, I said that I found some of their practices, such as asking for huge $1,000 pledges on a 10-year game and uh, doing things by trying to continue the community by constantly posting new concept art, new concept art for a 10-year-old development cycle. Uh, I just found that cringe and weird and sort of sus. The whole, the whole thing just is starting to feel like a cult. That's what the way I put it. And boy, if if this is a cult, uh, then we, we got to the Jonestown moment, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, two huge things have happened to Pantheon since I made my last video. The first of these is that they've completely revamped the art style to no longer look like the sort of EverQuest a boomer art that people like me like. And, I mean... Let's point out the obvious craziness of changing the art style of a game that is 10 years into its development cycle. So that's, let's, let's talk about that one aspect of the crazy. So that's one aspect of the crazy, right? Is that they, um, they changed the art style in a 10-year-old game in development that's still in pre-alpha. And the new art style just makes it look... I, very like Lord, like Le League of Legendsy, or very Fortnite. -y. Maybe I'll put some screenshots up on that of that while I when I edit this video. But it, it's a huge change, and it, it immediately made me suspicious. Like, why are they changing the art style? And so they announced that I think two months back now, and I would think, why would they do that? Why would? I? And today we know why. I'm just going to read this out because I know a lot of people actually don't like to read and they'd like to put like YouTube videos on as a podcast and they want me to read it for them. In fact, I mean, that's my job. I'm an audiobook narrator. People pay me to read things for them. Fine. So let's get into it. Greetings, Pantheon fans. This month, we are looking at the 24-7 gameplay mode. Or is it 247 gameplay mode? I think they want you to say 24-7 game mode, but they type 247 gameplay mode. And diving deeper to see what it is and what it means for Pantheon and its fans. We began about a 20s... We began talking about a 27 game mode in July's production letter. We are at a point now where we need to run Pantheon in a persistent 24-7 environment to collect the data and establish a continuous feedback cycle as part of our new continuous integration, continuous deployment model, CIDI. So I can already tell you they've hired the people that do copywriting for um, like industrial tech companies because I also do voice acting for them, and this this reads like um, there's just a way these things are written. This sentence doesn't even make any sense. So what? Yeah, yeah, you need to be running your MMO 24/7 to know the data about your MMO. <laughs> I, it, it's just the it's the strangest double speak that I corporate double speak that I ever heard. And also, they're they're whoever they hired to do the copywriting for this clearly has a background in back-end uh, infrastructure for internet uh, and probably like it doesn't it doesn't make any sense what is that it, it do, this is not the sort of thing you publish to your supporters this is the sort of thing you would publish to investors which is something we'll get on to later we'll get we'll get on to that um, but this is not a sort of thing you would do in, in PR or community relations this is not how you talk to your community it doesn't make any sense it's very weird Unless they're doing it for legal reasons, which we'll get to later. Additionally, in such an environment, we can collect information on performance, player behavior, and identify areas that need attention. Well, yeah, but you can also do that by just releasing the game in whatever state it's in. Um, to gather real information over a long period of time, we also know players consume content much faster than we can keep up with it. This is a basic truth for any game. Um... Well, it's not a basic truth for any game, but a, but a particularly complex problem with an independently developed MMO game. Um, yeah, I mean, I have not consumed. I cannot keep up with the content that Jackx released for RuneScape ORS. I can't even keep up at all. I come back every other year, and I'm still, like, overwhelmed. 
Um, thus, the 247 game mode was conceived. This is just so bizarrely written. It's so bizarrely written. It. Uh, so I do. Uh, I'm not going to go into it. It's very strange. The 247. 247 is a way to play Pantheon with a significant twist. Players begin in Tazarin's gaze, grab tasks from one of 11 watchers to build faction, and then enter a timed. That's ba bad grammar. To build faction? I think they meant to build a faction? And then enter a timed instance of Pantheon. Players can choose either PvE or PvP mission instance. Again, mission instances? Mission instance? I don't know. Once in Terminus, they can either focus on the task given or simply spend their time exploring, grouping, gathering for crafting, and otherwise playing Pantheon as they so choose. So basically, what they've done here is they've converted the game from an MMO into an RPG with multiplayer elements. That's what they've done. That's what they've done because they know that they cannot build an MMO. Because if they were to release now, the game is so lacking in content, so desperately lacking in content, that it would more or less be, you know, maybe they've got one starting zone. But then here we get to the, I mean, if you're thinking that, well, yeah, surely building a whole nother game mode, that's a lot of work, right? Couldn't you build two starting zones? That, that might satisfy the players. Let them get up to level 15. Leveling in games like EverQuest is slow. But they haven't done that, and we'll get to that later. But basically what this mode is going to be, it's going to be like a, a little mini game, right? That is instance and then fades out and cycles. Uh, the data collection here is absolutely mind-numbingly bollocks. Um, it, it's absolutely... If you wanted to, co co to collate the correct data for your MMO, you would just release the MMO in whatever state it is in. Creating a different gameplay mode with different player objectives is going to give you completely different data than you would need for running an MMO. My partner described this as trying to collate data on one financial project and needing to do it by collecting old tea bags. Like, it's it's that off, off kilter. It doesn't make any... Why would you do that? Uh, and so I've been hearing about 24, 247, 24 7 testing by people who comment on my last video, but they can't tell me, but they said it's really bad. Keep in touch. So, so basically, uh, there's not a lot more to say here. They created a little tiny mini game mode. But before we before we completely leave this this page, I, I just want to talk about because I did accuse the game of being a cult, and I, I want to before we move on to discussing what I think is really happening behind the scenes. I want to go into a little bit of the, the why I why I I'm, I'm not saying that to insult the people involved, except the people that are leading the cult now. Because I was very clear in my in my last uh, video on this that I did not want people to think that I was attacking the Pantheon developers. From this video, I do want you to think I'm, I'm attacking uh, Pantheon's developers because they're exploiting their community uh, because they've created a cult. And so, like, look here, look here at this community feature monthly recap. Can duel working toward the common good. This is cringe. That's very weird. As, as somebody that do, reads a lot of copy, I read copy as my job. This is some strange copy. People do not talk like this. It's very, very weird. This is not your usual corporate speak. Um, and like, here we have another one. Community spotlight. Finn, the dissenting voice. This is very, very weird. Like, listen to the opening here. The Pantheon Rise of the Fallen community is full of voices, both encouraging and criticizing. It is important to us that we hear our fans, particularly those who have supported us intensely as our members have. One such member occasionally takes, to the, takes the team to task on development decisions, but we are here for it. And it's just this really, really cringe interview with this poor guy from their forums that they pulled aside and were like, Hey, you still really love Pantheon, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you good doggy. It's so... This is, the, this is how cults work, right? They're like, oh, I know you dissent. But, you know, it's good and you're always allowed. It's so weird. So weird. All right. So now that we've established that it's very, very weird, 
I want to go in more detail into what I think is actually happening. But to do this, we really need to look at another MMORPG that was crowdfunded on Kickstarter back in 2016 at the tune of $1.3 million. Chronicles of Illyria proceeded through its years of development and then finally closed the studio in 2020 after the owner of the studio took a lot of government money through the COVID times. But what immediately happened after Jeremy Walsh closed the studio was all the backers said, hey, we want some evidence of some kind that all of the million dollars you raised over those years, at totaling eight million by the end of it, was actually used on something. And immediately, once they filed a lawsuit, Chronicles of Illyria was back on. And now, instead of being released as a massive multiplayer game on the Unreal Engine, it was going to be a small strategy game similar to the Banished games. If you've ever played Banished, it's a small city builder, albeit with some new promised features. And that this somehow, this other game, would somehow turn into Chronicles of Illyria at some time in the future, finances permitting. And everyone knows why Jeremy Walsh did this. I don't even think he's disputed it legally, so I think I'm just free to say it. Everyone knows that if he give, if you if a studio gives you a minimum viable product, you're going to get out of the contractual obligations that you are promised in terms of a pledge. And sure, a lot of people have been saying about Pantheon, oh, these were donations, these were donations, they're going to be fine. Uh, no, 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 you're, it's not, that's not how the law works. I'm no lawyer, but I've studied jurisprudence and I can read legal documents. I can tell you that's not how it works. If I start taking pledges to make a game and I don't do it, I could take, it. that's fraud. I could take donations, allegedly fraud, sorry, allegedly fraud. I could take donations for a charity for a species of whale that doesn't exist. They're, they're donations, but I'm still behaving in an unethical manner, and I would be legally punished for it. So the, the whole idea of this new game that they've created is that they're, they're realizing there's no way they're going to finish the MMO. It's never going to be finished. They can't provide any minimum viable product. And so they had to pivot to create a new minimum viable product, which they hope even might recoup some of the loss. So they changed the art style to be more Fortnite-y, and they're going to probably release this as a commercial. They say, we give you a solid maybe on whether this is a commercial product. A solid maybe. It's not a commercial product. It's not. We didn't take all your money and then design a different game because we realized there was no hope that we could make an MMO. And that's, that's the reality. Um, they need to do two things. They do need to release a game, presumably, and they can't make an MMO but they also don't want to be sued. And they, the, the new game mode is a way to attempt to do all of that in one swift blow. Change the art style, create a new game that is an MMORPG, take the backlash, but in the end, they might make some money from this new game and they won't be sued. And uh, I think that gets us to the end of this video. Yeah, that's it. Um, oh, wait, I forgot. Um, for those that are still watching, um, I was right. I was right. Uh, yep. Yeah, just just wanted to get that in there. Just mm -hmm. goodbye. See you in the next video. Like and subscribe. You want to subscribe to a man that's always right, right? See you.